Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here today with Sarah Coppett, who's the editor-in-chief at Skift. And uh, many of you know what Skift is. It's a great newsletter uh, and also service, and it does a lot of re great reports in the industry, and it has some amazing conferences. And in fact, we were just at one uh, earlier this, this month. It's the Skift Megatrends, and this is where the editors of Skift identify major trends in the industry. And indeed, uh, we saw they presented what those, and actually had some great interviews with different figures in the industry. And we're going to talk to Sarah today today about the 12 megatrends that Skift has identified for 2024. And you're going to hear all about that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Sarah, great to see you. And uh, I know you, you actually had to jet off to London after that conference last week to do the same thing over there. And now you're back yep. back in New York. And so uh, anyway, so we got a good chance to hear from you guys about what uh, these new megatrends are. And I guess my first question is, how, how do you uh, you and the other editors decide what these megatrends in travel are going to be each year? Do you, do you come up with these and then you kind of vote on them? How does, how does it work? Yeah, it's it's actually a really fun process. We kind of we all get together, I would say, you know, starting in the fall, kind of after back to school season, that that seems about the right time to start, you know, kind of mulling them and we we really do kind of just at first spitball, you know, throw things out very unformed at first, but then, mm -hmm. you know, as the we do a global forum usually in September, we get an opportunity to hear from tons of people from all over the industry at that. So we kind of get the ideas going. I think the global forum really informs what people are talking about, what they're interested in. We hear from, you know, leaders across the sectors and that really goes a long way into crystallizing what we think we, um, you know, kind of the, the trends and what we're seeing. Sure. And then we all, we have such an amazing resource within Skift in our research department. Mm -hmm. So we have like an editorial branch and a research branch where our analysts are able to kind of weigh in. We talk with them. We see what data they're seeing. So we have a lot of kind of hard numbers and background to support a lot of the theories that we think we're going to see. And then, you know, as the snow flies, we start, we start writing. So we don't really vote so much as, you know, we kind of sit around, we pitch to each other, we see what sounds best. We kind of work off, off one another. And, you know, there's not a hard number. We take the ones that we see as being, you know, a real force in the industry in the next year. And we go from there. No, that's great. And, and I was at the, the Megatrends event, which uh, uh, was a very cold and rainy day uh, down in lower Manhattan, but the, you had a good attendance. Yeah. And, uh, it was yeah. interesting. And you do, do name these very creatively. And we're, let's let's actually, we're going to go try to get through these very quickly because uh, I know, okay. you, you know, in, in terms of let's we're going to. We're going to speed dial through this uh, and, and just see yeah. what's going on. So here are the 12 megatrends uh, that Skift has identified for 2024. Now, the first one, uh, here's with the interesting uh, title called Junk Fees Get Tossed, which really refers to hotels. Talk a little bit about what that all means. Yeah, so if you've ever gone to a hotel, Never, and, never, uh, never, checkout. never been yeah, out. Never, <laughs> yep, never. Go to check out and you see things like a resort fee or other sorts of, you know, add-ons to your bill that were not, they are not optional. They weren't told ahead of time. This is kind of what the Biden administration has named junk fees and they've made right. it uh, one of their uh, points of their administration to really kind of do away with, with this on a consumer protection basis. So we think that in 2024, between a final ruling from uh, the FTC, another one from the Department of Transportation, and then the state of California also enacting some fee disclosure rules there, that junk fees will in 2024 become a thing of the past. No, and so no more resort fees. We'll, we'll, boy, that Thank will you. be a well, welcome thing, especially how we always yes. to laugh at we get resort fees in a New York hotel. Uh, you know, yes, exactly. What does that mean? But uh, that mm -hmm. yeah, it would good to, be good to see. And I, I think certainly yeah. you, it, they should be identified 
that you're going to what they right. are exactly. And I know that's, exactly. that's something a lot of people do agree. Even the American Hotel Association uh, and Lodging Association agrees that those should be identified. So that's that's. Yeah. A so next one uh, with another interesting title, Humanity's Faustian Climate Bargain Comes Due. Now, I'm assuming this refers to sustainability and, and the fact we're all, you know, in climate change uh, and all the things like that. But would you tell us what what was this trend? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think it really started at least in the mainstream zeitgeist where it was the summer of 2023 that really the kind of the impact of climate change and, and, and not just climate change, extreme weather right? really made it made a difference in people's lives. It made a difference in how people traveled. It was too hot in Europe. People could not be in Spain in August. Like the, you know, Rome was on fire. They don't have yep, air conditioning in your, you know, all of these type of things where really, you know, before now it's been climate change has really been talked about largely as a future problem, something that our children and grandchildren will inherit. But I think last year really it really hit home for people that, you know, the future is now. And so we are, we being the travel industry are going to have to start in 2024, really grappling with what that means for logistics. It's not a theoretical anymore, I guess it's uh, it's here. No, so absolutely. how is that on the ground going to affect um, everyone in our industry? And you're absolutely right. I mean, I've been dealing with really hot weather in Italy and, and now, you know, and everything is extreme, as, as you said, the storm yeah. more extreme, everything gets more extreme. So that well, will affect travel, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. And well, like when we were at Megatrends, we had yeah. a, um, there was a state of emergency, like, and I didn't even know, we didn't even know that was coming when we were all on site. We were like, there's a state of emergency declared um, in New Jersey, I believe, for, for yeah. winds, high winds, 65 mile an hour winds. So it really, like, if anything, that, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about. No, absolutely. And it is going to be a continuing trend every year. I'm sure you may have that trend next year. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. Uh, the, 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 let's see, we're up to, that's two, three. Third trend, supply chain nightmares will haunt the airlines. Um, so, air, yeah, so airlines have, have been going through this for a while, but the supply chain post pandemic is really still causing a shortage of everything. And the airlines simply don't have enough parts, pilots, um, components to, to operate in the way that they would like. So mm -hmm. the, the slowness in the supply chain is going to affect uh, their ability to run their businesses. Well, cause they can't get enough airplanes. And then some of the planes that they have need to go back to the shop, like the, the latest yeah. max, yeah. you know, cause yeah. once again, I thought that story was done, but here we are back again, talking about the Boeing max uh, jets and, and, you know, exactly. bolts, bolts flying off. Well, that makes me feel really good. Uh, so mm. we'll see what happens now. Next one, uh, executives meet your new intern. And here's the word again, artificial intelligence, AI. What does that mean? It means, I think we were talking about, uh, is it just that you're going to have an assistant who's now your AI? What's going on for travel? I think that it's broadly the fact that we all, and I know that I do this um, in my own life, we all now have switched our behaviors and a lot of that kind of first draft type of stuff that we do um, is done with the help of chat GPT, something that maybe you would have an intern, you'd assign it, them to do yeah. it. And then, you know, you as the expert go through, read it, check it, make it better, um, make changes. Um, a lot of the ideation that we that we do in our white collar jobs, um, Chat GPT is it's you know it's not perfect it's not the it's not the final product but it's it's not a bad start so I think that that that's really what we're thinking in in 2024 there will be a very uh, precipitous shift towards people getting in the the habit of really using this technology where last year it was more of a novelty. People were kind of just waking up to this because um, it was so new, but now in 2024, it's, it's going to be a real impactful um, tool 
that executives are going to use across the board in travel in all other industries, frankly. Well, for our, our travel advisor audience are already starting to use it to in their communications and uh, yep. you know, that they're sending in their number of agencies that have been developing programs. I mean, sometimes I feel like, you know, you get these trends like AI and all of a sudden everybody feels they got to say AI in every other sentence uh, yeah. because it's important. But for me, uh, one of the best tools I, I figured out is you can get a press release put it through a, uh, a chat GBT, say write AP style and take out all the adverbs and adjectives. And then it's yeah. usable. So it's, it actually works for me a little bit there. So we'll see, yeah. we'll see what other people can figure out. And I'm sure there's going to be more extensive, even video editing. I've heard that you can do that as well. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Let's, let's get to the next one. Uh, this one. Uh, and, and I agree with this. We keep getting a lot of releases in this category of hotels. New hotels will seduce the middle-class traveler. Uh, there's a lot coming in in the lower mid-scale market in hotels. I, I can't keep up with the brands, to be honest with you. Yeah, they're in in our, you know, the big ones, Wyndham, Hyatt, Marriott, they have been just talking about how this is really where a lot of the, the it's where a lot of the money is. It's where a lot of the business yeah. is for them. It's the, it's the middle class traveler who wants value and who wants, you know, once you get to the middle class, you might have a little bit of an aspirational um, component to it, uh, loyalty programs, but value is also very important. So we're not talking about luxury. We're talking about, you know, your, your kind of bread and butter Americana, um, type traveler and hotels. They think that 2024, this is where, you know, a lot of the margin is for them. They're building, as you say, they're expanding, they're everywhere. And they're also creating new brands, which I sometimes I think if yeah. I have to see another new brand as a hotel, I'm going to die because it's just, <laughs> I, I, do we really need this? And But they've identified this area. And, and to be honest with you, these hotels are not uncomfortable. They're, they have all the amenities, no. they have everything you'll need. Mm -hmm. And it's perfectly, you know, we all focus, you know, being what I do is I go to, you know, luxury hotels and those kind of and resorts. But these new hotels are, are actually very comfortable. You know, I'm thinking of, you know, even even at another scale, things like moxies and and things like that, you wouldn't think uh, uh, it, they're kind of cool. They're kind of hip, and it's working, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, it is. Now, let's the kids talk... love the waffle makers <laughs> and the free breakfast. Well, that's the only reason yeah. the waffle makers and the free breakfast. That's what I what, what I got. Yeah. Now, next time, <laughs> made in Dubai is the next global brand. Now, again, this is a this is you know Dubai has been you know I was there many years ago and I went back last year and it is just exploding there. But tell us a little bit about yeah. why you identified this as a trend. So Dubai is, as you say, it is just on fire. I was just there for our global forum East, and you know every time I go back, I hadn't been there in about five years. It's just like the, the scope of the change is it's stunning um, in, in places like Dubai. So Dubai is really putting a lot of resources and effort into marketing itself uh, for tourists and for business. Um, there is a, a fantastic um, ad that we actually played at Megatrends um, while we were talking about this, uh, Shah Rukh Khan, which this relates to um, one of our other trends who's, you know, the world's biggest movie star. Uh, if you, if, if, if you follow, if you follow Bollywood, um, and, and I do, I'm, you know, a, I'm an aficionado. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, he, he has been signed up to be the spoke, one of the spokespeople for Dubai. So Dubai is really making a play to be one of the biggest players on the world tourism stage. And I think they already are. Um, I, I'm going to predict your next mega trend for next year or the year after is uh, made in Saudi might be the next. Quarter. Yeah, because they have a heck of a lot more money. And I was just over there last year and it is amazing what they're doing already. And what they have planned is almost off the charts. But Dubai continues yes. to be I'll be there myself in uh, May. And I, I always there's always new hotels. There's always new well, whole new lands. I mean, I was on the first of the yep. world islands, which was uh, had a had a resort, uh, the first resort on a world island uh, not beyond Palm Island. And it is if you can yeah. that these guys have been doing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. So uh, next one. Uh, there will be a short-term rental boom in the Middle East. Now, I thought that was in interesting, especially given where we are right now in the Middle East, where there's a lot going on that ain't so good. So uh, what yeah. is this trend then? And what? how did you identify this? 
Yeah. So, you know, the as far as we can tell, the geopolitical struggles in the Middle East haven't really affected tourism outside of, you know, the the affected areas. So Mm -hmm. that's that's one thing. So when in this in this piece, we were more talking about Saudi, about Oman, about the UAE, they have huge tourism projections in the near term. So they think that they're really, as we say, making a play to be a tourist uh, destination, putting tons of money, tons of resources into making that happen. But the the kind of the where the kind of disconnect is, is that so much of the hotel space or the places for people to stay is not in the market, is not in the same socioeconomic market of the uh, the people who may come to visit. So meaning they're building luxury hotels and luxury hotel Absolutely. rooms when perhaps, you know, this middle class traveler maybe perhaps what in Indian or otherwise, we're going to get to that later um, is coming to visit. And so that's where we, we see that the short-term rental boom will come from people who are looking for more budget alternatives to these luxury hotel rooms. So it will be filling a void um, for, for the, for the traveler who's looking for a more budget conscious option to stay. Or then refers to an earlier trend about creating these hotels for the new middle class, which I think I right, predict you're exactly. going to see th- those hotels. I know already in China, you're seeing those hotels all over the place. And yeah, we do tend to focus on the luxury hotels and it's great, uh, but there has to be other places for people to stay if they're going right. to go to the Middle East. I think another one, another uh, another corollary to this is that you see the tremendous amount of development in the Middle East. So obviously they don't think these the you know wars like Israel Gaza are going to mean for the long term they're very hopeful about the the stability of the region eventually mm-hmm. so that's a good yeah. thing yeah yeah very much a good thing so let's talk a little bit about the next one which is you just mentioned it earlier is the world really yeah. uh, ready to meet the indian middle class i mean boy they're you know now india what is the most populous country and uh, yep. birth rates declining in china and they are i mean the middle class is here in china, and i would argue the upper middle class is in india as well so we'll talk a little bit about that that trend you actually yeah. have, have a skift forum in march uh, in india so yeah. it's a yeah. chance to yeah. look at what's going on right yeah, so India especially they see a huge swell in in the in people who will be in the middle class there by 2030. So so if you you put that on top of the fact that their population they have a huge population but their population is also young. So they have so so they're rich, they're young and they love to travel. Yeah. So when you put all of that stuff together and you know I think that um you know, we're where we might not have seen that segment of the world population, you know, in tourist destinations, especially outside of, um, maybe, you know, the Middle East, the subcontinent in in uh, Europe, you know, that is going to be a, a the next boom where we're going to see um, a huge number of travelers, you know, getting out there and spending their money and enjoying themselves. And that's a great thing. Well, certainly in the Indian diaspora that comes we have Indian communities, obviously here in the, in the U S everywhere in the world. And I do think the younger, you know, Indian middle class is going to start traveling heavily, somewhat similar to what the Chinese middle class uh, did that was only interrupted, I think by the pandemic. Uh, you know, they were yeah. starting to, I have good friends who say, you know, the Chinese traveler wants to go everywhere. And so you're saying as soon it's going to be the Indian traveler that wants to go. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's going to be an interest. So next one, this was, this was actually an interesting one. One of my favorite, I think you actually did this. Uh, uh, we're up on stage doing this. Your IV is ready, sir. So what do we mean by that? <laughs> Yeah, so that is referring to what uh, what we call extreme wellness. So that this would be, you know, we're talking now on the luxury end of the spectrum. There is so much uh, that hotels and spas, resorts are talking about this concept of biohacking. Um, maybe people don't even know that word yet. Uh, no, it's really using 
Yeah, it's using science, it's using behavioral psychology, it's using nutrition, like all of these types of things to really promote wellness. And so, you know, if you go to a very upscale hotel now, like I was talking to Chris Norton, who's the CEO of Equinox Hotels, right. you will find a in the spa, you'll find a menu of various IVs that you can get to, um, you know, maybe help with jet lag or make you feel more awake or revitalized. I have never done it. Um, I, I said that on stage. I felt felt a little odd to me, but Chris tells me I, I should definitely come over and, and check it out. But yeah. Um, but it's, it's really, it's really that it's, you know, they've done a lot of studies, the hotels about, you know, how to really optimize sleep within the rooms. Um, it's, it's, it's all kind of like a maybe soft medicine type type feel to it to really make people uh, feel better, perform better, have an edge on the world stage. Like I said, these are these are your luxury hotel guests. These are the people who will pay for, you know, any little bit of optimization they can get out of, you know, their own human body. So, well, I think you were joking that, you know, the commuters can come into Penn Station and and go over to the Equinox Hotel and get you stuff for the day. Right. So you, you get you stick that IV in and get the energy you need and everything else. Uh, it, it was a trend I was not aware of, believe me, but uh, it, I could see where, you know, people want to do that. And then the corollary, the, the, the next trend also involves this in a way. Uh, it's actually a word I was not too familiar with until recently. Uh, the Ozempic era will force the travel industry to adapt now first of all yeah tell us what ozempic is because i i didn't know what this was until a few months ago and and how is travel going to have to react to it yeah so ozempic is one of the new uh class of uh, class of medications they're called glp ones um which uh are were originally developed for di to treat diabetes but have had um kind of a second not a second life. They never went anywhere, but a second wind uh, as a as weight loss medication. Right. So a lot of them now have been rebranded. Uh, Ozempic for weight loss is called Wegovi. There's another one called Manjaro for diabetes that has been re renamed Zetbound. But these medications, unlike the other weight loss drugs that have popped up over the last maybe 50 years, are wildly effective they work. Yeah. And so this, this, this is the difference is that, you know, there are a lot of people now who have taken, you know, they take these drugs, they lose, you know, a hundred pounds. That's, that's really normal. And it's, and it, it works on the brain is as well as, you know, physiologically in the body. They're also being studied for, um, to help alcoholism, to help, cigarette smoking to help, you know, with shopping addiction, it, it, it all kind of plays in the same part of your brain. And so a lot of people report, um, you know, that a lot of these things that we would maybe consider vice or excess is diminished by these drugs. So, you know, the idea being twofold. So for food and beverage, for um, hotels and resorts, what does that mean for them? Uh, you know, there's there's two there's two different business models for that. You've got people who rely on concessions and food sales to really supplement their bottom line, and then there are places like you know all inclusive hotels who have you know a fixed cost for their food and beverage that maybe now they they might not have to buy as much if you know they're if they're you know, clientele is not is simply not eating or drinking as much. So okay. there, there, are these type of things will play out. I have, a, I also, I actually wrote this one and I actually talked to, you know, people who have said, I just, you know, I go on vacation now. I've never been able to do a lot of these activities like whitewater rafting or going hiking. And so, I don't know, I'm not going out to eat anymore. I don't even want to. So I'm taking that money and doing, you know, an adventure trip or something like that. So it really has far reaching implications over a lot of um, a lot of travel related activities. So I think 2024 is when companies are really going to start taking a look at what it means for them. It's, it's not bad or good uh, per se, but like at Equinox, for example, at the gym, not necessarily the hotel, you know, they have said, OK, well, they now have a, an entire plan for um 
people that take GLP one medications mm -hmm. because it's like, Oh, okay. Well, people aren't coming to the gym anymore just to get skinny. Now they're maybe to get stronger, like build right. back up some of that muscle that they've lost when they um, have lost weight. So, you know, so it's, it's that type of thing. It's like, how are companies going to react to this? Because a lot of them are going to have to, you know, make changes or see how it affects their bottom line. So you're saying you're saying Zipic actually decreases your desire for food, so maybe they don't have to buy as much food. I was kind of hoping that I could eat all I wanted and just take it and and just not not gain weight. That that doesn't work that way, right? It doesn't work that way, but <laughs> from what I from, from what I've been told, you won't even want to. That's what I. Okay. That's the. That's, yeah, but I, there, I, therein lies the yeah. <laughs> but then part of it, but thing there you go. Part of going traveling is experiencing all these wonderful foods yep. and places on all over the yep. world. So I hope I don't have to lose completely my desire for that. But maybe not as much. Yeah. Uh, my solution yeah. now is eat half of it. But that's another story. Uh, but you know, we yeah. all go on these trips all over the place, and it's very hard to keep an exercise routine or anything like yeah. that. And and you're right, uh, Equinox. We go to Equinox to lose weight, but now maybe it's just to get stronger. So that was an interesting, yeah. I really, I like that one. I, I haven't explored Ozempic quite yet, but I may, may have to. Uh, next <laughs> one, uh, robotics versus demographics, the big battle to come in travel, a very intriguing uh, topic. And I, I think it has a little to do with the AI, but tell us a little bit about what this trend is. Yeah, so the idea being that the de demographics are shifting all over the world. The the world is getting older, um, and you don't so have to tell me I'm getting the, older. It's a stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, there will be a lot of you know new opportunities for um, for like robotic assisted, um, maybe like baggage handling and things mm -hmm. to help not only help the the an aging population, but also to really make up for the fact that a lot of these younger workers that are there to do some of these more physical jobs, mm -hmm. um, they're not going to be there anymore. So right. that hole is going to be filled by, uh, by robotics. Enter, enter the robot. Yeah, so that's that's actually interesting because uh, you know obviously you know as I as I get older and I don't really want to carry my bag around now that we have all these yeah. rollers and everything else and I've gotten it down to one roller bag and one knapsack that's all I take no matter where I go um, uh, so I don't have to worry about it that doing but I got to tell you in about ten years that's going to be harder to do that's for sure so yep. maybe I'll be yep. I'll be looking for my, my robotic assistant so interesting trend exactly. now we're actually down and down to the final trend. Uh, how yeah. people can fix the world's great loneliness crisis. Let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, we've just been through a number of years where everybody is sitting in their apartments or their homes because they were afraid of the yeah. pandemic. And now we're emerging and we're kind of going out. But what is, what is this trend that you're seeing? Yeah, so this is, this is really maybe the most, you know, philosophical or macro one, and it really speaks to the essence of travel, I suppose, and that is connection. And it's, it's the thing that a robot can't give you. It's the thing that AI can't give you. Like nothing, um, nothing helps the human heart, I suppose, like connection and travel. And so, you know, we, we've, you may have read, or, you know, I, I see it quite a bit, um, in the media here in New York city, but you know, there is a, a loneliness crisis and it is something that, ha that we, we heard a lot more about during the pandemic and, and it, it has continued. And so, you know, what, now that we are all able to go out, we are all able to kind of share and be around people more. Um, you know, how is that affecting travel? I mean, the answer is travel has been, you know, gangbusters since the pandemic. Yeah. And I think it's really shown us all um, kind of the power of togetherness and just how, you know, thinking about travel and, and this loneliness crisis together and how one can really help the other. And I think the pandemic really just put a, you know, a microscope on that and really emphasized to all of us how important it is um, oh, and, for yeah, us as humans. It absolutely humans. did. And yeah. the first thing I could do... Yeah. I'm I'm one of those guys who did have uh, COVID pretty badly back in 2020. And as soon as I could travel, I did. And I yep. traveled. Of course, that's yeah. partly for work because I felt it was my mission to show that you could. Yeah. And I traveled through the end part of 2020. And then I traveled 200 days uh, on 2021. So, uh, yeah. I, but again, uh, this I'm, I'm a little bit, on, uh, you know, 
I, it's what I do. It's it's what I do. But yeah. I do see a lot of people on the roads. Everybody's out there. Everybody wants to rediscover. There's still a little trepidation because of disease and yep. everybody, people are worried. Yeah. Um, in general, it really has been, you know, they talk about revenge travel, which I guess was maybe last yeah. year's trend, right? Yeah. Uh, and now now we're kind of beyond revenge travel, and maybe we're just out there trying to be less lonely, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, of all these trends uh, above, I know you mentioned one of yours, which you wrote was the yeah. uh What are some of the yeah. – give, give me the, the top three for you that really uh, you, you like the most and you think will be the most impactful. Well, I'm biased, so we'll we'll put the Ozempic one on there just because okay. I, I I think that that really will be um will be will be a very impactful one. I think I think the loneliness one is is kind of spot on. I think that that is something that it's not just for 2024. I think that that is something coming out of um you know coming out of the pandemic. That's just something that you know. I think humans may be rediscovered in a way that mm -hmm. uh, that we didn't expect. And then I really also think, unfortunately, that um, our, you know, the extreme weather and climate situation mm -hmm. is going to uh, very quickly come to a head close, sooner, sooner than we sooner than yeah. we thought it would. So accelerate that there will be. Yeah. Yeah. It will, it will accelerate. Um, so it's, it'll be here sooner than we think. Um, and maybe in many places already is. So those are, those are probably my three, um, the three that I think will be the most impactful for the travel industry in 2024. And where can uh, our viewers, uh, our travel advisors, and also industry professionals go to find? Uh, you have you've all written articles uh, on all of these trends. Uh, Absolutely. I, I assume it's on Skift, right? Yep, skiff.com backslash megatrends. There you go. So that's where you can read all about this. Although Sarah's given you a, a pretty good idea about all these trends here. Uh, and it was really a great session. And, and then you repeated it in London. Uh, Sarah, I want to thank you for taking the time to go through all of these 12 trends. Uh, it was fascinating. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Fascinating to hear. And then at the Megatrends event, we also heard from a lot of executives, as you mentioned, the CEO of Equinox mm -hmm. and a lot of people like that. And it was really a, a great presentation. But I sort of wanted to sit down and do it, do a little more like each tw uh, each trend in turn. And you've done that. So thank you so much. And we look You're forward welcome. to the next uh, next year's trends and what they will be. And we look forward to the Skift Forum in September, which I was lucky enough to be at as well uh, this, this past year. And again, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you then. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.